So 24, the last one in section B of paper one of the 2014 higher maths paper. You've got this exponential equation and you define the value of k and a. Now there are two ways you could do that. Given these two points, you could simply substitute those into that, get a pair of simultaneous equations and solve them. But the fact that there's a graph here suggests that you should solve it the other way, which is to rearrange this into a linear equation to compare it with that line and then equate the corresponding features of those. So I'll do it that way, or rather I'll do it that way first. So this is log base 9. So if I take log base 9 of y, which I would have to do to make it match that, I'll have to take log base 9 of the other side. Then I start splitting this up log base 9 of a product means it's log base 9 of k it must have been the sum of that with log base 9 of a to the x that power can pop out of the logarithm I've got log a log base 9 of k plus x times log base 9 of a I'll just rearrange that slightly log base 9 of y, which I should have done first of all, I suppose, just to make it look more like this line here. Because if that's the equation of a line, it would be in the form of y equals mx plus c. Only the y would be whatever the vertical axis has, and the x would be whatever the horizontal axis has. So I wanted to say something like something log 9y equals something x plus something. So I'll write it as log base 9 of a times x plus log base 9 of k. And then you can solve this by comparing the two features of it. So if that's meant to be like y equals mx plus c, then the coefficient of x must be the gradient, and the number at the end must be the y-intercept. So I can say that log base 9 of a must equal the gradient of that line. So that must equal 5, take away 2, for the difference in the verticals, over 6 minus 0 for the difference in the horizontals. So that's 3 upon 6, which is a half. So log base 9 of a is a half. So a will be applying the inverse of log base 9, which is 9 to the power. 9 to the power of half is 3. There's one of them done. The other one is the number at the end must be where it cuts the vertical axis. So for the vertical intercept, I would have log base 9 of k equals 2, in which case k equals inverse of log base 9 is 9 to the power 2, so k is 81. And that's all it asks for. What's the value of k? And what's the value of a? And there you are. Another way I could have done it is by substituting the points into these to form two simultaneous equations. But I'd have to have x and y values. Well, I'm OK for x values. Those are the 0 and the 6. But those are log 9 of y, the log nine of y values. Red leather, yellow leather. So that... For instance, this one here, if log base 9 of y is 2, then I know that y must be 9 to the power 2, which is 81. And if log base 9 of y is 5, I know that y must be 9 to the power 5, which will not work out yet. So I could feed those in instead. Take this point here. So this is actually the point 0, 81. Put that in, and you've got 81 equals k, times a to the power 0. Well, that's quite handy. a to the power 0 is just 1. So straight away I've got k equals 81. So when I come to the next one, which is to put in the point 6, and I'll just call that 9 to the 5 just now, then I'll have 9 to the power 5 equals, and I know what k is, it's 81, times a to the power 6. So I'll just do a wee bit of moving about because that's 9 squared. So taking that and cross and dividing, 
means I've got 9 to the 5 over 9 squared, which is 9 to the power 3. And then a will be, take the sixth root of that, so that means it'll be over 6 in the index, which is 9 to the power of half, which means a is 3, using simultaneous equations. But with this you have to watch you put the appropriate number types into the equation. And there it is, question 24, again.